The speed and performance of our websites is paramount these days, especially as it relates to ranking high in Google search algorithms so that all of our content pages actually get seen and visited organically. And so in this video, I wanna walk you through my five tips on how you can start thinking about speed and performance optimizations for specific pages on your website. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. <laughs> Let's not waste any time and jump straight into tip number one. That is, be intentional with what you're optimizing each of your web pages for. And not all web pages should be optimized for the same thing. I like to think about optimizing pages for two primary purposes, user experience or SEO. And by that, I mean user experience optimized pages should be those sorts of pages that a visitor, a customer, or someone would just type into their browser and literally land on your homepage is a great example. Your homepage should be optimized for user experience. And just as an example of what that would look like is this website, Wealthfront, which I'm a big fan of and a user of. And if you, we look at their website with the big, beautiful video, as we scroll down, we have some cool big graphics, subtle animations, it's very media rich and asset heavy. And by that, I mean they are doing a really great job of creating a branded experience and they're not necessarily worried so much about speed performance or ranking high on SEO with this particular page. Now let's go ahead and look at the page speed insights for that particular homepage of Wealthfront. As you can see here, if we look at the mobile page speed, they're ranking about a 29. And for desktop, yeah, they're at a 72. I mean, these aren't terrible and these aren't necessarily great um, performance scores. But again, what they're optimizing for on that particular page is brand and is user experience. So as you're starting to think about your different pages, think to yourself, okay, great. What is this page going to be intended for? Now let's take a look at a page that would be optimized more for SEO. And we'll use Wealthfront's example again. Here is one of their content rich pages about how much money you need to start investing. As you can see, this is very text rich with lots of text, with different links and such. Now, obviously this is part of their blog and this would be a page that they want ranking high in Google search such that if anyone is looking you know towards some knowledge on investing they might come across this page now let's go ahead and look at the page speed insights for this page well mobile is already doing much better at 74 and if we look at desktop well they're at a 90. now again if we look back at this page obviously this is a content rich page. There's not a bunch of bells and whistles. There's not a bunch of big videos. This is very intentionally designed for SEO and thus speed and performance. So that is your first mission if you choose to accept it. Really dial in, what am I optimizing this page for? User experience or SEO? And let that be your guiding light. Let's go into step number two, and that has to do with images or any sort of visual asset and making sure that they're optimized. So one of the things that I always get questions of is someone comes to a stock website like this and finds some cool image like this Stormtrooper image, and they download it and they upload it straight to their website at the highest resolution that they were able to download. That is the biggest no-no when it comes to page speed and optimization because you have this very large file that actually slows down the load of that page. So to optimize your files, what you wanna do is largely two things. One, and that's think about the size of the actual file. So if we look at, say, this page, one of the tools that I love to use is a little Chrome extension that I have right up here that's a page ruler. And what you can do with this is say we wanted to just, you know, fill this page. Well, what you can do is you can drag this ruler out and the very top here, you can see the actual width and or height of this area we want to define the image for is going to be, you know, 430 pixels by 280 or, or some odd change. So this is a great tool to use so that you can make sure that as you're saving out your images, you're saving them out at the, at the right dimensions. 
The second part of that is actually looking at the file type. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pop over here to Photoshop. And this is, is as if we opened up that image um, straight up, straight as it is. So the first thing we would wanna do is we'd want to do Command Option I to bring up our size adjuster. And we wanna bring that width down to 430 pixels and hit OK. Obviously that got really small. And then the next thing we would wanna do is we'd wanna save this out as an optimized, typically a JPEG. So we would do Shift Option Command S for Save for Web. And that's gonna bring us a bunch of options. Now, the one thing that you wanna keep in mind is the file type, like I mentioned. Chances are, if you're on uh, the web and optimizing in any images, it's gonna be a JPEG file, or if you have an image that requires a transparent background, it would be a PNG24 file. A PNG is always gonna be a larger file type in terms of its size. So if you do not need a transparent background, make sure you're always saving out as a JPG file or a JPEG file. So let's go ahead and pick JPG. Now you're gonna notice one thing right over here, I have the quality set to 100. And with this selected, if I were to save that file out, it would be around, let's just say 50K, 56K. Now that's a pretty small file for the most part, but again, the, our dimensions are pretty small. So typically what I like to do is I like to adjust this quality down to somewhere around 60. Now you can see right here by just making that quality adjustment, now we're looking at an image which is about 15K, which is a huge difference in terms of load time and the quality really you wouldn't even be able to tell to the eye that anything has changed in the photo. So tip number two is definitely think about how you're optimizing your images specifically so that everything is optimized to load fast and super quick. And that leads us really nicely into tip number three, and that is to leverage lazy image loading wherever you can. Basically, what lazy image loading is, is it is a function that doesn't load images that are lower on the page and out of view until they are almost in view on the page. And this does what's called defer off-screen images, which might be something you see if you run a report in Google PageSpeed Insights. And so if you're using HubSpot, they have a great new feature, which I've been utilizing quite a bit, where you can click on an image and we can edit this and then go into advanced. And then you have an option right here in terms of how you want this image to load. So you wanna make sure that they're always on lazy, especially if they are down further on the page. That is gonna be a game changer for you in terms of speed and performance. Let's go ahead and jump into tip number four. This has to do with all of the additional JavaScript embeds and different third-party tools that you might have embedded on different pages or on your entire website. Now, one of the things that I have been a fan of in the past is using a service called Hotjar, which allows me to track little hotspots and where people are clicking and so on and so forth. It's a little embed script that um, goes in the head HTML of my website and it is an awesome tool, but only for a very small period of time because it adds a tremendous amount of weight to load on each page. So if you do have the option to include, um, say, these sorts of analytics tools or even video embeds from, say, Wistia, Vimeo, YouTube, etc., you want to make sure you're using those very mindfully when it comes to pages that you want to rank high in SEO or load fast. So that is tip number four. Reduce any scripts that you really don't need on these sorts of content pages. And that takes us to tip number five, our very last tip, and that is keeping the bells and whistles to a minimum. Whenever you have a content page, just like we saw with the Wealthfront example, you want to do your best not to throw all the bells and whistles at the page. And by that I mean not using cool animations or sliders or little chat widgets or, or all the bells and whistles, like I'm saying, that make that like ooey gooey fun experience that all creates page weight. So do your very best to eliminate those sorts of things on these 
you know, content rich pages that are largely intended to inform a visitor, teach them something, and hopefully convert them into a potential lead of your business. And those are my five quick tips on how you can increase the you know, speed and performance of your website. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a comment below and I would be happy to answer that and help you in any way that I can. Have an awesome day and I'll catch you in the next video. Later. I don't know if you could hear it, but my voice is like, it's, it's super hoarse today. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna have like that podcaster voice, but it's like I've been chain smoking <laughs> for like a few packs. I don't smoke, but, but I'm just, I'm really feeling it right now, so. Well, we'll see how it turns out <laughs> later.